Hello everyone and welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I'm going to do a calculator tutorial for you on the Texas Instruments TI-83 Plus, a basic liquid crystal display graphing calculator. Now this is not Texas Instruments first graphing calculator, but it is the first one that uses the modern interface that is still used by all of the TI-84 model line calculators. Now, this graphic calculator, as you can see, if you're just moving into a pre-calculus course or a math 3 course and you were required to buy this calculator, is a little different than some other calculators you might have used in previous courses, including this TI-34 MultiView. This is your standard, or an example of your standard, scientific calculator. You notice the screen difference. This does not graph. It has... Uh, multi-level views of expressions, but it does not graph. This one, as you can tell, can fit a graph. It also has many more features than the multi-view does. So as you move from here to here, notice you're gonna get a lot more functionality out of a graphing calculator. Now, like most modern high-performance calculators, the TI-83 Plus is an equation operating system style calculator otherwise known as an expression calculator or formula calculator. You're going to plug in an entire expression and then evaluate it with the enter button. That's how these calculators work. Now, I'm going to show you some basic features in this video. It's really a, a basic introduction to the calculator. And so to turn it on, we press the, of course, on button. And we get our little LCD, liquid crystal display, blinking at the top. It's ready for entry. So let's try a basic calculation. 1 times 5 plus 3. Now, you may be wondering, does this calculator know the order of operations and apply them properly? Absolutely. Absolutely does. And so, it will multiply 1 times 5 first, and then it will add 3 seconds. So we should get 8. And that's exactly what we get. I pressed Enter to get that result. That's the basics of how this calculator works. Okay? Now, if let's say I wanted to make a number negative. On uh, the other type of algebraic operating system style calculators, the older system where you can only plug in one operation at a time, you'd have to do the minus sign separately. A good example of this would be your cell phone calculators that you plug in uh, the minus sign after the number. A basic difference in the equation operating system style calculators is you can put the negative first. This little button here is different than the minus button here this negates a number. So I have negative 8 now. And I can multiply that by numbers as needed. Let's say I make a mistake. Oh no, I didn't want the number 9 there. I wanted a different number. You can, with these arrows, move the blinking cursor over the number 9 and either override it or delete it. So let's try the delete feature. So now there's nothing there. So let's uh, say instead, oh no, I didn't want the number 9, I wanted the number 6. Move the cursor back over the 9, so that it's blinking, and then plus the number 6. And so now you see, you can overwrite and delete previous entries in your expression. You can press enter to get the result, negative 48. Let's say you did the whole calculation and you realized, ah oh, crud, I did it wrong. I just want to go back and do it again without entering everything. Of course, it doesn't seem to be necessary in this case since it's such a small expression, but sometimes your expressions get large. So let's try it. What we do to repopulate the screen with our next entry or with our previous entry for editing is we press the second button and then the enter button. Now the second button, let me explain. The second button, like most TI calculators, activates the features in yellow above the buttons. So, if I press second enter, I will activate, and I'll zoom in for you, the entry feature right there, okay? That's going to populate the screen with my entry from my previous calculation. Notice how you know you're on the entry feature when your calculator blinks with that arrow instead of just the solid cursor. If I press the second button, that goes away. If I press the second button again, it comes back. This is how you activate all the yellow features above each button. So if I press second, enter, I get my previous entry. 
and I can move the cursor over and edit what I need to edit. Now let's say instead of negative seven times six, I wanted negative seven times negative six. Now I need another space to input my correct negative six. There's two ways to do this. First, let's repopulate the screen, with our editable expression. Now let's say we wanted to include a negative six. You would move your cursor over the six. You could type negative six. That's one way to do it. Or instead, let me revert back to what we have with the delete button. You could do the following. Let's say you want to include the negative without deleting or overriding anything. Press second and then delete. Now you see a different type of cursor mechanism. It's the number itself is blinking. This means that the next keystroke that is an actual symbol, such as the commas, parentheses, or the numbers, decimal, or minus sign that I push next will input that in front of the blinking number. So let's put a negative in now. Aha, and you could continue to add things in front of the digit that's blinking if you want, as many as you want. And then if you'd like to delete them all, go to the most left digit you want to delete and press delete repeatedly until you get to the desired result. Those are the two ways you can insert things you miss. Okay, so that's basic um, arithmetic operations. Now, fractions. Uh, my big pet peeve with this calculator is that it doesn't do fractions like the multi-view does. I will do another video on the multi-view later. The multi-view allows you to revert between decimal and fraction in a nice vertical format. The TI-83 Plus does not have that feature. With the TI-83 Plus, let's say I wanted to divide 5 times 3 by 3 plus 5. So what I would do is I'd write in parentheses 5 times 3, close the parentheses, so it knows that's the numerator, then it will press the divide feature. Notice how it doesn't do the divide symbol, it does the slash symbol instead. So you can treat this like a fraction. 5 times 3 over, in parentheses, put 3 plus 5. Close parentheses. Okay, 15 divided by 8 is going to be a decimal. All right, so that's how that works. There is a way to see a fraction instead of a decimal, and that is to press the math button, and then you see a menu here. Now, I just want to point this out before we continue. The menus on these graphic calculators are quite extensive. We have multiple columns of options. PRB stands for probability, CPX stands for complex, NUM stands for number, and math stands for, of course, math. If you type the number one or press the number one when it's highlighted, see I can move this down and up, press the one or press enter when one is highlighted, what it does is populate the screen with this. ANS is a feature on these calculators that stores your previous expression's answer. And so this arrow means it's going to turn my answer into a fraction. Let's press enter and see what we get. You get a fraction like this, 15 over 8. And you can go back and forth between fraction and decimal. So if I press math again, and this time I press either the number 2 or move the cursor down and highlight number 2, it's going to turn my previous answer, which is now 15 over 8, from a fraction into a decimal once I press enter. And it's back to a decimal. So let me show you how the graphing works. If you need to clear all your entries, if you have a scientific calculator, you're used to this, you press clear, and the screen depopulates. Now, y equals this button here is how we access the graphs. These will be single variable graphs with the output solved for. So like y1 could be f of x, your function. Now we're gonna plug in a very simple function. This button here is your variable button. See how, if I zoom in, you can see that the options for this button are x, comma t, comma, a circle with a line through it which stands for theta, the Greek letter for uh, theta, 
and n. So what I'm going to graph now, if I plug this in, is y equals x, a very simple line that all of you are, I'm sure, familiar with. How do you get the graph? You come over here to this button and you press graph. Now, if you are just getting your calculator for the first time, you might not understand the results. And that's because of the window. The previous user, if you're not the first user of the calculator, has their window settings stored. If you want to just panic mode, reset them to normal so that you see your normal grid like this, x-axis and y-axis, this is what you would do. You press zoom and you look for number six or Z standard. This will reset all the window settings so that you see a standard window with the origin in the middle. Aha! Now we see the x-axis, the y-axis, and our line graphed perfectly. I can graph all kinds of things in here. Notably, trig functions, okay? Sine, cosine, tangent, are those three buttons there in the middle, the black buttons. And if I press the second, I get inverse sine, inverse cosine, and inverse tangent. So let's say I wanted to erase this graph and start with a new graph. Press Y equals, and then clear your graph. So let's try sine of X. And you will have to close the parentheses when you use the trig button features. Now when we're graphing trig functions we have to make sure of one thing. That one thing is in the mode menu. The mode menu has a bunch of settings that you can toggle back and forth between. The one that we really need to pay attention to is the third one down. You can see I know it's vertical, I'm sorry. Uh, radian or degree. Now when we're graphing trig functions, we are in radians. So I see the top uh, toggle is um, highlighted and blinking, so I'm going to move down to the third one. Now, if I highlight radian and it's blinking, if I press enter, watch what happens. It selects radian mode instead of degree mode. To exit this menu, now that you've set your degrees to radians, you press second mode which activates the quit feature. This is something you can also do when you're in any menu and you want to get back to the normal display. So we'll go back to y equals we're gonna graph normal sine x. Now if you're familiar with graphing trig functions you'll want certain tick marks on the x-axis. How do you get those tick marks? Pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. I will show you. Press zoom one more time and go to number seven. Now notice this arrow here. This arrow here means there are more menu options. So you could scroll down and see that there are more. We want number seven, zoom trig. It will immediately graph the sine function. Now look at the tick marks. The tick marks, there are four, well rather three, on each side. These represent pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and 2 pi is the edge of the screen in either direction. This is how we do the graphing of trig functions. Let's say that you wanted not to change your window entirely, but just change one aspect of the window. Maybe I wanted to see more negative uh, values on the y-axis. I can press, instead of zoom, I press window. Now, the window is set up for the zoom trig feature. So if you notice, it almost goes to negative 2 pi and positive 2 pi. And on the y-axis, we go from negative 4 to positive 4 by default. Watch what happens when I change y min to negative 8 instead of negative 4. What I will do to get out of this window but not back to the main screen, rather back to the graph, is I just press graph. Look now how the center origin has been moved up and I can see more negative values on the y-axis. This is an interesting feature. Sometimes you just want to see, for example, the first quadrant, just positive values. Maybe you have statistical data and negative values make no sense. So you'd go to window in that case 
and you would press x min, you'd want it to be 0, and y min, you'd want to be 0. So let's see what the graph looks like when we've set our window this way. Ah, look at that. I only see the portion of the sine graph that shows up in the first quadrant. Positive y values and positive x values. All right, very good. Now one more thing I want to show you in this basic tutorial are how to deal with exponents. So if we want to get out of the graph, what we would do is press second mode, which is the quit feature and gets us back, as I've said before, to the main screen. Let's say I wanted to raise something not to the second power, which clearly you would use this button, for example, five squared, enter, gives you 25. Let's say I wanted five cubed. Well, there's a special shortcut for the cubes. Let's say I wanted five cubed, I'd press five, and then I would press the math button here. And if you look at the menu, three down, you can see the number three, a little exponent version of it. So if I press number three, now I see that it's five to the third power that I am finding, which is 125. What about higher degree roots than the square root? Just quickly, the square root, let's say I wanted to find the square root of 49. In equation operating system format, you'd write the operator first, which would be the square root. It doesn't pull the square root over the entire uh, number. However, it puts a parenthesis there for you so that you can close it when you're done putting things inside the square root that you want to square root. So this will operate on 49. We will find the square root of 49 once we press enter. Seven. So what can we do if we wanted to find the cube root? Well, there's a special button just for the cube root. If I want the cube root, I press math and I press the number four. Four. So it gives me three radical parentheses. That means cube root. The cube root of eight is a nice cube root. I will close the parentheses so it knows that's all I want to find the cube root of and press enter and I get two. Now let's say I wanted to do not a root anymore but a higher order power. There's no special button past the cube in the math menu. You would use the caret button to make this feature come up. So let's say I wanted four to the power of nine. 262,144. So you press the number four, you press the caret button, and then you press the exponent. All right? Now, what about higher order roots than the cube root? Well, there's a special way to do that. You press first the degree at which you want to take the root of something. So the fifth root, I press math. Now, look at option five. Option five says x radical. That means the uh, degree of the root based on the number that's already in the expression. So if I press five, this calculates the fifth root of whatever follows. Now, don't ask me why they didn't put a parenthesis there for you. I have no idea. It's a little interesting. But we're going to calculate the fifth root, let's say 625. Close the parenthesis. We will now calculate the fifth root of 625. Psych. 625 has a nice fourth root, but not a nice fifth root. As you can see, if we get an irrational number, we get a couple decimal places. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the floating point number system on this calculator defaults to nine decimal places. I also want you to notice how many rows of data I can get on one screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight rows long, so you can see quite a history of your previous calculations. What I want to show you before I leave the exponent world is I would like to show you scientific notation. So there are two ways to do scientific notation on this calculator. Let's say you wanted to write out 5.2 times 10 to the sixth. Okay, you would start by writing 5. 0.2. Now there's a special button. It's the second feature over the log button. If I press times right now and then I press second log, 
I get 10 exponent caret and then a parenthesis. So this is going to evaluate 5.2 times 10 to something. How about times 10 to the 6, like I said earlier? Close the parenthesis when the exponent's finished. If you press enter, it will re, re, uh, result in the standard notation version of that number. And uh, this is nice, but that's a lot of buttons to press. There's actually a shortcut for scientific notation specifically, and it is the second to the comma, EE. -E. I'm not sure what EE -E stands for, I apologize, but I do know that it works just like the times 10 to the button. So if I do 5.2 and then press second comma, I get a little e. The next thing I will put is the exponent for the 10. So that e really stands for times 10 to the. So 5.2 times 10 to the 6. And I will get the same result as I did for the previous notation. I just want to show you one more type of feature, and that is the memory capabilities of this calculator. This calculator is storing a ton of my previous expression evaluations. If I press second entry once, I will get the previous one. If I press center, second enter again, I will get the one before that. If I press second enter a third time, I get the one before that. I can go back very far. All the way back, really, to the beginning of this tutorial. All of my expressions have been saved in this calculator's memory. Let's say you wanted to get rid of all of the memory of this calculator. Sometimes you want to do that if your teacher is allowing you to share calculators between periods. Maybe you'd have a test that day and your teacher's like, okay, you want to share that calculator with another student? You've got to clear the memory first. Well, how do you do that? Well, I'm going to show you. The second to the plus symbol is a memory feature. First, let me clear the screen. If you press clear once in the middle of a calculation, it will clear the expression you're trying to evaluate. If you press clear again, you get rid of everything. Now, nothing's erased from the memory though. So if I press second plus, I get a special memory menu. If I go to number three, clear entries, and I press enter, I get this expression on the screen. Clear entries itself doesn't do anything until I press enter. Done. Now if I clear out of this and try and recall some of my previous calculations, the only one that will show up is clear entries because everything else has been cleared from the memory of this calculator. All right, guys, I hope this introduction to the TI-83 Plus has proven useful to you. There will be more specific videos coming in the future, so look out for those. Thank you for watching. This is Falconator signing out.